Hello, hello. Welcome to the Productive Wellbeing Show. This is episode 20 and you are with me, your host for the show, Abigail Barnes. It is so awesome to be with you. Now, as you are joining, please let me know where you are joining from. If you're watching on the replay, if you're watching live, let me know where you're joining from. Um, and also in the comments, let me know how was your Easter um, if you were celebrating or how was your sort of long holiday weekend? Where are you joining from? What were you up to? Um, how have you been? How how many Easter eggs <laughs> did you eat? Um, who were you celebrating with? So um, were you able to catch up with friends, with family? Did you did you have um, an, an online Easter lunch? Maybe um, we had five uh, five households all on a, a Zoom lunch, um, so that was really fun. Trying to sort of explain to everybody how it worked and explain to everybody how to have conversations. Um, where the screen moves. So if you've used Zoom um, with your families, then you will know what I'm talking about. But let me know in the comments where you're joining me from, um, how your break was, how you're doing uh, in the UK, where, where, wherever you're from. So in the UK, we're in, going into our fourth week of lockdown. And I know some other countries around Europe are in different weeks of it. Um, if you'll be listening to this on the replay, maybe you'll be listening to this on the replay like way, way, way into the future. That would be really interesting. And you'll be like, lockdown, what happened in 2020? What on earth was going on with the world? That um, The airplanes stopped flying and countries shut down and um, everybody had to work from home. Really? Wow. I think um, I just want to sort of touch on because we've had a few days. I mean, I had a few days off. So I had Friday and Monday. So I'd done sort of back to back to back shows every week for sort of four weeks because I started this the week before um, the country went into lockdown. So um, I really needed the break. I really needed a rest. And this weekend I did really random things like jet washing um, a patio and painting a rainbow sign to put in the garden so that people who walk by could see it because the rainbow symbol has sort of been taken on um, as a symbol for the lockdown to kind of signify unity and bringing people together. Um, and I just wanted to paint a sign and did some Easter crafting and all sorts of things just to do other stuff other than focusing on what was going on, um, how was I feeling, how was everybody feeling, um, because I think it's important to try to get some kind of balance and some kind of um, new and create like a new normal, a new routine. And so this is what the episode is about today. It is called Acing the Lockdown with the 888 formula. So for those of you who are new to the 888 formula, let me explain what this is. So if you absolutely have no idea who I am, so I run a business called Success by Design Training, and um, we use this formula and we teach this formula around the world. So let me just give you a bit of sort of a background to me and a credibility. A month ago, or maybe a month and a half ago, so it would have been end of February, I was in um, San Diego, California, teaching the 888 formula um, to, to people there. So this formula really is global. It's been all around the world and looking forward to being able to take it sort of further when the lockdown is lifted. But at the moment, it's going global online. So this is exciting. So what the formula does is it helps us understand uh, how we can break down a 24 hour day and how we can break down a 24 hour day and create the kind of day and the kind of balance that we want. So the formula breaks down 24 hours into three pillars. So the first pillar is around sleep. We need between seven and nine hours as human beings. So let's call that eight. Um, the next formula is activities. We'll come back to that. And then, sorry, the next pillar is activities. And then the final pillar is work. Um, and society dictates that we work eight hours a day. 
Now, prior to this, the biggest problem that anybody had that I worked with was that they weren't getting enough sleep and that they were working too much. So now um, what is happening from conversations that I'm happy, having with people, and maybe this is you also. So, you know, let me know in the comments what your biggest challenge is when it comes to time um, right now in lockdown, because the commute has been removed. However, in a lot of cases, other things have been added to the mix, like um, becoming a teacher to your children, managing managing a household, managing children, managing a workload, um, looking after animals and pets, uh, all like so much has changed. So what it used to be in so far as people were not having enough time to sleep because they were so busy at work and they were commuting, perhaps one thing has been replaced with another. And I'd really love to know. So over the next few days, I'm gonna be asking on my social channels, so on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn and on Twitter, I'm going to be asking for you to let me know what your biggest challenges are when it comes to time and time management right now. Um, because obviously the world has fundamentally shifted. So with the 888 formula, these three pillars, sleep, activities and work. So sleep we have created um, a sleep training to talk all about the importance of sleep and then ways that you can improve your sleep which is something that i will be talking more about and giving you access to this as sort of time goes on we're just putting together a program to support people during lockdown when it comes to using the 888 formula to ace their lockdown experience um under the second pillar activities this is everything so this is your entire life if it's not sleep and if it's not work it's all going into there so you will be starting to see how many things have maybe been neglected while you've been busy focusing on work and um, commuting and and keeping you know keeping up it's almost like the hamster wheel has stopped and now we can all start to analyze what was i doing with my time how was i spending my time this is why I didn't have time to pay my bills, to review my um, to review my subscriptions. I mean, there must be tons of things that we are paying for and have been paying for that we haven't used, but just never had enough time to look into them. There are maybe friendships that are no longer serving us. Equally, there are friendships that we probably have neglected because we haven't had enough time to to be in touch and to contact and to check in and to to um, catch up with people. So this time now is giving us an amazing opportunity to assess the middle pillar of these three eights, which is our life. Because almost from lockdown, we can now start creating the life that we want to have. We can start looking then into the next pillar, which is work, looking into how we are spending our time when it comes to work. And this is a whole module that we are creating to be launched next month around how to be productive while um, remote working and how to really maximize your eight hours because there is no reason that any of us should be working more than eight hours. It's what you're contracted to do. It's what you can do when you learn how to manage your time, how to master your time. You don't need to be working any longer unless you're in a, a career or a sector or you know maybe you're in the NHS for example where the hours are slightly longer but if you are um, working sort of as a professional in in a, an office job let's say obviously now your home is your office then you should be able to manage your time so that you are doing what you need to do within the eight hours that are allocated to your day. Um, there are a number of things that you can do to, to maximize that time. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the new training. Um, because the worst thing that you can be doing right now is trying to cram or not trying to cram, but spreading out eight hours of work over a 14 hour day. So just doing bits and bobs here and there. 
rather than learning how to chunk it and to focus it and to get it done in the time that you've got. Now, say if you and your partner are managing children, like you you have um, children at home and you've got to do sort of the homeschooling, there are ways that you can buddy up and one of you works the morning shift and the other works the afternoon shift and then you switch over. Um, there are all sorts of little hacks, all sorts of little things that we can, if we think outside the box, come up with to maximize our time so that we are acing our work, getting the sleep that we need and getting on top of our activities, which is mostly made up of our life admin. Um, things like cleaning the house. I mean, maybe you had somebody that did it for you, but maybe now this is a responsibility that you have to take on. How can you clean the house? Can you do one room per day? Can people that are in the house with you help? Um, or maybe you don't need to do things as much as you've been doing them before. So this period of time is basically a piece of blank paper. I mean, I've said this over and over again in episodes before, your life now is calling you to actually question, how do I want to spend my time? What do I want my return on my time to be? Um, and what would I like my life to look like after lockdown? Um, do I enjoy who I'm working for? Do I enjoy who I'm working with? Do I enjoy um, how I'm feeling? How am I feeling? I've never had time to really question how I'm feeling before. This is this is amazing, but also it's confronting because now I'm feeling things and I don't know what to do with the feelings. So it's layers and layers and it's like an onion. And every week that we're in the lockdown, another layer of the onion is being uncovered. And the thing with onions is as we peel them, we do cry because that is the gas that's released from an onion. So this is where the onion is a great analogy it's because you're releasing an emotion. So as a layer comes off and it feels a bit painful and it feels confronting and maybe you don't feel as in control as you were before, as professional, as organized, as this, that and the other, just know that you are releasing an emotion that is serving you, that is helping you to step into the person that you're really meant to be. Because when we are busy, 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 doing, 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 we're actually not being at all. And we are human beings, not human doings. So the 888 formula is a baseline to help people to understand where all their time is going and what they're getting for that time. And if they're not happy, what do they want to do instead? Um, and that's really what I wanted to talk to you about today is to sort of say, we've had the weekend, We've had some time, depending on which country you're in, hopefully you've had a bit of a bank holiday time, a bit of a rest, and it's time to rest, and it was time to reflect, and it was time to basically say, okay, cool, what do I want now? And if you imagine like that this is a war scenario, for example, there are many, many battles that win a war. We don't just win a war from winning one great big battle. So if you like this analogy, imagine every day, everything, everything that you're auditing are like mini little battles or mini humps or mini hurdles that you're overcoming. Whatever analogy works for you, you have to go with. Um, but as we are going along, we're all growing, we're all evolving, we're all letting go, shedding these onion layers and getting more and more and more to the core of who we are. And this is what this is all about in many ways, is being with yourself, confronting yourself and looking and seeing, am I happy with who I am? And if I'm not, I actually now have the power to change it. But what can I change and how can I change it bit by bit by bit by bit? So I can see some comments coming in from you guys. Um, love the concept of this period of bank of time. We are now being a blank sheet of paper. Yeah, totally. But someone, some people are also in survival mode. And this is the interesting thing about everybody's at different stages in this. And I love what you're saying, Maria, as well. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Maria. Um, 
everyone's at different stages of this and depending on what stage you're at you need to go back and check out some of the previous episodes that we've done where we've interviewed trauma experts we've talked to anxiety experts we've talked to stress management experts um, and all of these episodes cover things to help you to understand what's going on inside of you everybody is different everybody's journey is different everybody is responding to this in a different way People that you might have thought would be able to ace this are not acing it. People that you might have thought are not able to ace this are acing this because everybody is at a different stage of their journey, their evolution, their understanding of themselves, and also their understanding of something that we spoke about in right at the beginning, which is who they are as an individual in terms of leading themselves, in terms of leadership, in terms of being the role model for themselves and then being able to be the role model for others. Because fundamentally, this 888 formula is reminding us that if we don't have our life in some kind of balance that works for us, we are going to explode in some unfortunate way because we're out of balance. I don't know if you've ever analysed your reactions to things when you've not had enough sleep, but they say that people without enough sleep, it's kind of the equivalent of, you know, if, you, if you're driving without enough sleep, it's the equivalent of being a drunk driver. If you are in meetings and making decisions and you've not had enough sleep, you can tend to find yourself being more emotional um, because one of the things about sleep is it helps our body to rest and to relax and to get out of this anxiety mode. And if you're one of these people at the moment who's not sleeping very well, then look at the things that you're looking at during the day. Observe the things that you're ignoring during the day. Look at the ways that you are trying to make yourself feel better during the day. Because when you're trying to sleep, this is your body getting these things out this is your body sort of almost pushing the alarm and saying to you hang on a minute we didn't think about this today we didn't look at this today we didn't we didn't review and package this up today um it needs to be done so i've talked about this maybe not in this sort of product product productive well-being show but i've talked about this for sure in other shows that i've done so on my youtube channel is a whole 20 minute training around journaling i would highly highly recommend journaling as an exercise as a go-to right now if you type abigail barnes into youtube you will find my channel um, and that is there because our bodies and our self are trying to communicate to us all the time we're just so busy being busy that we're not listening. Hey, Ian Dixon, thanks for joining. Um, we're just so busy being busy that we're not listening. But what needs to happen in order for you to grow from this experience, in order for you to become the person that you want to be, to ace your lockdown experience, to create your own version of the 888 formula, is that you become aware of your feelings and emotions what they're doing, how, what's being triggered, maybe watching the news triggers you, maybe watching the news late at night triggers you. So if you want to catch up on the news, maybe do that earlier in the day. Maybe conversations with certain people are triggering you. So start to become aware of who is in your circle and whether they're raising you up or they're dragging you down. And literally you are in charge of how you feel. Nobody can make you feel anything. An incident triggers a feeling, but that feeling is a habit pattern. So the more we journal, the more we understand that we are way, way, way more powerful than we, you know, truly ready to accept, the more we are able to start to come out of this experience. Because this lockdown is an experience. I mean, it's not maybe the experience that a lot of us want, but there are ways that we can turn it into an experience that will serve us and will help us rather than something that we just need to get through um, because we can grow through it rather than get through it. That is really all I wanted to share with you today. It is so awesome to be back. I really look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. We've got some great guests lined up for you this week. 
Um, and next week and coming up, we've got a parenting expert coming on next week. So for those of you that want top tips for how to manage your families in lockdown, you will definitely want to catch that. The non-perfect dad is absolutely amazing. I look forward to bringing him on. And um, this Friday as well, we have got um, uh, a TV presenter, um, a, sport, a TV sports presenter coming onto the show who is going to talk about desire, dream and vision and what he does to create the state that he that he needs in order to be able to grow through this experience rather than go through it. Um, that's a great, oh, a great question to ask yourself. Ian's just saying is what will I have achieved while the lockdown is on that I couldn't have done otherwise. So yeah, um, and here's another one. It's it's a bit of a confronting thing and people don't necessarily like to hear this, but you know this excuse that we've all been using, I'm too busy. Have you been trying to use it while you're in lockdown? And how has that been received? Just ask yourself that question because I guarantee you that you're not necessarily too busy now to do the things that you used to do. So that whole I'm too busy was actually an excuse. And when you catch yourself saying these excuses, that's when you can stop saying them and rather say, actually, I don't want to do that because I'm too busy is quite often something that we say because we want to be nice. We don't want people to be their feelings to be hurt, et cetera, et cetera. But now everybody knows I'm too busy is kind of like a cop out excuse. So just catch yourself on that one um, and start to see and start to sort of almost challenge yourself to say to people, thanks for the invitation, but I don't want to, or um, I, I just, I, I'm focused on other things right now. Think of ways that you can answer it more honestly rather than saying you're too busy, because I guarantee that that is going to start making you feel way more in control and much you know feel much better about yourself it's really crazy because we're not too busy 99.9% .9 of the time we actually just don't want to do it and that's cool anyway on that note it has been amazing to be with you today I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow um, until then don't forget stay safe stay well and wash your hands see you soon